Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In this unit, we're going to take a look at how to create tables and views using the Core Data and Services abstraction layer. We'll pick up where we left off. We have our database module that we created in the, uh, uh, the original project wizard. And then in the last video, I showed you how we can build the module and, and generate runtime objects. So far, we really just have an empty schema and our technical users. Um, now we're ready to actually start creating some database content. And we want to start with tables uh, and maybe a view. Um, and we're going to use, first of all, we're going to look at a couple different ways that we can create database artifacts. We're going to start with this abstracted uh, concept of core data and services, or, or CDS. Now, CDS is something that's available in the ABOP environment um, and has been available in HANA for, for a while, since HANA 1.0 SPS 6. The idea was instead of using uh, SQL, like the create table, alter table, uh, create view kind of thing to uh, to generate database artifacts. We would have a, an abstracted design time representation of the objects that would be uh, defined in a way that was not uh, database specific. So a database agnostic way of defining your database artifacts. And that's really what Core Data and Services delivers. Uh, it's um, in its latest incarnation is not just for creating database artifacts, but it also allows us to define our uh, OData services and even add in the annotations that will become uh, really the, the metadata that, that drives our Fiori uh, user interfaces as well. Now for a, a full description and background and, uh, and everything on this new core data and services, I'm going to refer you to the Open SAP course that is taking place here in January 2019 as well. I'll put a link in the notes of this video so, that, so you're, you're sure you're, uh, you're getting to the right one. I don't want to repeat a bunch of content that we've already recorded and made available via Open SAP course. It's, it's good background material um, and, and certainly a core part of HANA native development moving forward. Uh, so worthwhile to go uh, watch the videos there on, on the concepts and the background of core data services. For our purpose, we're, we're going to pick up here and I'm going to show you how we can use this abstraction uh, syntax to create tables and views. Uh, so what we have here is, um, is the wizard already generated a, uh, a data model.cds. That's our entry point where we begin to build our data model, and it actually defined a, a table. Uh, in CDS, a, a table is called an entity. Uh, we don't even use the, the term table. Um, but you can see it looks like it would be a table. We've got a key uh, column. We, we name our columns. We give our data types, not using the HANA data types, but an abstracted database agnostic data type. So instead of nvarchar, which would be the HANA data type for a variable character uh, column, it uses string. So, so more general programming kind of um, uh, syntax. Same thing with integer. Uh, so what we want to, to do here is we, we don't want the sample content. We're not going to create a books table. Uh, instead, uh, we already have some, uh, some, exam uh, some content created here. Let's go to ex21a. So we're going to get rid of this books stuff. And actually, uh, we're going to have such a large data model that we don't want to put it all in, um, in, one, uh, in one file. So we're actually going to break out uh, our first part into a separate file uh, that's going to be in, um, uh, in a file named purchase order. Okay, so now we can go ahead and create this file in our DB folder. So I'll just say new file and we'll say purchase order dot cds oh I do want to save this file that uh, you might have noticed there was a little asterisk there that's maybe an important thing to point out that lets me know that this file is a dirty editor it hasn't been saved yet uh, so I can go ahead and uh, and watch for that although in this latest version of the web IDE 
I try to build a project and I have unsaved editors, it will pop up and it, it will uh, notify me of that and ask me if I want to save before it builds. The the older versions, it did not do that and it would just go ahead and build with the old state of, of, uh, of the code um, for that, that you hadn't saved yet. And uh, that, that, that could be some Times confusing. A lot of people made made mistakes because of that. So that's a that's a nice new feature. Now I don't want to type all of this. I'll, I'll explain what it is after I cut and paste it in. But let's go ahead and get it in here first. Um, oh, I'll put it in my purchase order file. So what I want, um, we can declare reusable types. This is like um, if you come from the ABAP background, this is like creating a data element. Uh, a column definition that can be reused in more than one table or view. So I've got a few of these where I'm going to have currency used multiple times and amounts and quantities. And I go ahead and declare them here as just reusable types. And, and that way, you know, if I would change the definition of what a currency is, um, you know, maybe instead of string five, I need string six tomorrow. I could change it once and then all the tables and views where I use that will, will automatically be adjusted. Um, likewise, I can have reusable structures. That's what I've done here. I'm going to have a history block repeated in multiple tables where I'm going to record the created by, created at, changed by, changed at. And I just don't want to repeat that definition in multiple tables. I can do it once and then just pull in the structure, as you'll see here, and then it'd be expanded in place to, to have multiple columns. And that just re uh, makes for better consistency. And, and once again, if I wanted to change it, I, I I could change the definition in one place, and then all the tables and views that use that structure would uh, would change as well. Uh, then you see we're creating some entities. So we're going to create a purchase order header table and a purchase order item table. Pretty straightforward. We're, we're using the built-in data types, and we're using some of our reusable types. For instance, um, node ID, partner ID, well, those are business keys, currency. We're going to get the type from our currency uh, type here. So it actually become a decimal, 15.2. Uh, the amount becomes an amount. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's a 15.2. The quantity is a is a 13.3. So you know, see us using different uh, different types here. Now here is sort of the uh, the powerful part of uh, CDS. Even going back to the very first incarnation, the ABAP incarnation, they they all share this idea of associations. And the concept of an association is, ultimately we're gonna have a view. And if I scroll down here, you can see I'm defining a view. But notice, normally when you declare a view, you have to have like a parent and a child table. And you have to tell it what the relationship is. You know, what's the join criteria? What column do I wanna join on? And is it a one to many or is it a many to many? Um, the idea of associations though, is that instead of defining the relationships between tables or entities inside their consumption, inside the views, let's move that to the source itself. So we define it once inside the entity definition. So for instance, we've said here that headers has an association to items on the header column of the items entity to self, so it's gonna use the key of, of the header table. And, and that's your that's your join condition. That's your um, you know association to many. That's a one to many. A single purchase order header can have many items. And and likewise, we come down here and we have an association going back to headers. So for each item, there's there's only one header associated with it. And, and because this, we're joining directly on the keys and it's a it's a one to one, we don't even have to specify the rest of the syntax. So First of all, we have a, a database agnostic way of defining the relationships. We don't have to define join, inner, outer, subquery. The, the system will look at the relationships and, and the target database, and it will choose the best way to, to actually generate that in the database. Ultimately, this is going to compile down to SQL and, 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 and create statements and alter statements for you, um, but, but let the... Uh, let the CDS compiler do that work to take your definition, your abstracted definition, and turn it into SQL so that you're not having to code the SQL yourself. So it's a simpler syntax for you to deal with. It doesn't require you to necessarily learn the, 
the database, in this case the HANA specific SQL statements for that. But also, in our view, our, our view definition is greatly simplified because now I can just say header dot purchase order ID and header dot partner and then the rest of the columns come from the item. Nowhere in the description of the view do I have to define the relationship between the two tables. That's inherited automatically from the association. So you can imagine if you wanted to uh, change the relationship between two tables, um, the old way of doing things where you had to put the relationship in each view, you might have 20 views on top of the set of two tables. Well, you'd have to go find all 20 of them and change every one of those views. But with this approach, I would change the relationship definition once on the entity itself, and then all the views that reference these entities and use that association will automatically be changed. So it's just a better maintenance uh, by centralizing the definition inside the, the, the table itself. Okay, so at this point, we've got um, what we would have. We'd have a header table, an item table, and we have a view that, that represents the, the relationship between those two. So I can go ahead and save. Now what we want to do here is we actually want to come up to our project and we want to say build build CDS. And this is going to run the CDS compiler on the client side that will take these .cds files. Oh, and I have uh, I still have a little bit of a problem here. Oh, uh, I forgot. I need to make an adjustment here in my uh, service as well because the wizard generated uh, a service a matching service file and it generated a, an entry in it for um, for this booking info which we don't have nor do we need yet uh, or anymore because we wiped that out. That was all wizard generated uh, template getting started content. So let's take that out. So. Uh, so we don't have a problem. Now let's try building again. So let's say build CDS. Now this is not building it into the database like we did in the previous exercise. And this is a completely client side concept. And I still, uh, yep, let's take this out for now as well. Sorry, helps if I follow my own exercise instructions a little closer here. And let's do the build CDS again. Now, like I was trying to say, this is doing a build on the client side. It's using the CDS compiler to read these CDS files and then actually just create corresponding HDB CDS files, taking us back to the, uh, the old um, uh, version of CDS, which in turn, when we build this database module, will generate pure SQL. So we've taken it from... Um, HANA, not HANA specific CDS, this new CDS, which is database agnostic, and compiled it when we did the build CDS to HANA specific CDS. And now we can do a build on the database module, and that will take these HANA specific CDS files and use them to generate SQL, create statements, alter statements, and actually push this content into the database. And at this point, I could go back over to the database explorer and now when I open let's let's close some of these other windows just so we can see things a little cleaner if I come here to my tables now I've got a purchase order header table and I've got a purchase order item table I can see the definition I can see for instance like my history created by created at changed by changed at that was expanded in place I can see that the abstracted data types have been transformed into HANA specific data types and varchar 10 as opposed to strings. And I can also see that I have a view here as well. I have this item view. I can see its definition as well. But of course, I don't have any data yet. You know, if I were to come here and I would come back to one of these tables and, and, and say open data, uh, there there is nothing to see. We haven't populated any data into the tables. 
And that's what we're going to do in the, in the next video. We'll show you how we can um, add some CSV files to our project to stub in data for, for testing uh, when we have a scenario like this where we have a greenfield application where we're creating our own tables from scratch. We're not accessing ERP or BW or something like that. We need a way to get some test data into the system. We'll look at that uh, next time.